Welcome to part two of Decks I Can't Live Without. Now, I just wanted to clarify a little bit about the second category, which was originally called Decks I Really Like, but I'm going to instead title, it, title that part of it, Decks I Really Like But Don't Love Yet. Because as I go through these videos, again, as I mentioned in the, the last video, which I will also link in the description box, I will be kind of culling my collection as I go along. So I'm going by how they make me feel, and then I will be able to reassess their importance to me and my collection going forward. The third segment, again, will be decks I'm getting to know, and I don't know how many parts these are going to contain, but as I go through, I will keep you updated. And the last section will be decks I'm rehoming. So as I go through these videos, I will be adding to that list for sure. So welcome to part two, enjoy, and please let me know your thoughts. If you're going through your collections as well, let me know how that's going for you. It is springtime and in the spirit of decluttering, and minimizing a little bit of the overindulgence that we've kind of, as a collective community, gone through in 2020. Um, I'm hoping that this series will help us kind of take a, a better look at our collecting habits as well. Welcome and let's get started. Hey fellow heathens and welcome to part two of Tarot Decks I Can't Live Without. In the first video, we talked a little bit about some of the things and some of the decks that just give me all the feels and I've talked about why they affect me so much. And moving into part two, we're going to talk about decks that are still just as important, but the feelings that I get from them is a little less strong. As we move along, then I'm going to be able to detect which decks I enjoy strictly for the artwork, which there are some in my collection and I do plan on keeping them strictly for that purpose, but I haven't developed that depth of connection that I have with some of these decks. First up is Kelly Fitzgerald's uh, Journey Oracle and her Story in Color Lenormand. And I had this bag made, this bag came from Kelly herself or she she included it with the purchase and i also have these decks as part of my perfect pairs video and she has a d20 die so there's a few cards that you can roll to talk about or to access the specific crystal the specific animal that might pertain to your question and i really like that i love decks that like are different in in certain ways and that's definitely something I enjoy. Now I have the mini and the standard bridge size of her Lenormand. This is one of my favorite Lenormands and I think it's because it doesn't depict people specifically that the feeling of the card comes out strong. So let's zoom in. So for example, the mice, like Kelly was able to depict something being being eaten away. And I mean, what else can you say? I mean, it definitely, it tackles that idea. And for another example, the heart, like it's like a blood splatter. Perfect. Here's the scythe. And this is like a cutting and you can almost feel the tearing, right? If this were to be skin, you could feel the the cutting away, but there's the, the yellow and the gold here that can indicate something positive. So yes, it might hurt right now, but something good is gonna come from it. And this I think was like one of my favorite, the key, look at it, just the sunlight, just parting the clouds, it's phenomenal. And she also has like coherent and significant, and that removes the gender element completely. So this would be like the yang uh, energy with the red, the fire, the person in question, that sort of thing. And this one she didn't even intend for it to look as, as specifically like a tree as it does, but it's stunning. You know, you even have the, the um, sky like that. And the moon and how ambiguous it is. I just go on and on and on, like coffin. It's completely black. <laughs> it's, a it's a dead stop, right? And for the ring, she was so clever. She combined 
the pink from the heart card and this like dotted um, design from the dog card. So dog indicating loyalty and heart indicating love. Um, love and loyalty put together creates the ring card, the connection, the, the contract, the, the marriage, whatever it is that brings people together, you're loyal to one another and you, there's something important to you that's making this, this um, partnership work. The fox, she helped me understand the fox could be thinking outside of the box, being, uh, you know, using your ingenuity, your determination. It's a perfect depiction. I could just go on and on and on, right? So that's another big favorite that I never ever want to be without. And I love doing Lenormand every once in a while for big snapshot images or big, big snapshots of like how my life is going at the time. And the Journey Oracle is another one that is so, it's so well balanced and it offers so much um, clarity to different readings. And it's so beautiful that it goes with anything, you know, getting grounded, speaking your truth, having a voice with that, that turquoise blue, just the clarity of that. The day and night, and she wanted a specific delineation between the two. I would have loved to seen it be a little bit more like instead of it being such a drastic change, because I feel like there's there's space and there's time in between these two cycles, in between day and night, the you know, the moments before the dawn and the moments before complete darkness at dusk, you know. But that's okay. She had her own vision and I respect it. Intuition, like you could see these tendrils of things like moving up from the deep. The lower world, it looks like a cave to me. You know, there's roots coming down from the, the ground above. Passion, fire, uh, just so, it just gets you these colors, air, intellect. Look at these dandelion seeds. The waning mood, releasing. Oh, there goes Rambo. I think my daughter's home. So this is the Journey Oracle. Love it. And the and the story in color Lenormand by Kelly Fitzgerald. Love these both. Two thumbs up. Next up is the Hughes Tarot. And the Hughes Tarot, this is an out of print deck. It as I mentioned in a previous video, is one of the decks that I like to go to and use when I need some guidance, but I'm not feeling like I want to be told that I need to just smile and get over it. I like that it mirrors that kind of somber melancholy feel and it offers me that space of validation basically validates those feelings for me you know and I think tarot does that where sometimes people don't give you what you need but you get that reflection you get that energy from from some of these decks and it's almost like a hug from the universe So as you can see, it's, you know, very simple. I mean, not simple because it's got all these, the intricate details of this uh, marbling effect. But like, look how, look how sad he is. I mean, shouldn't giving be enjoyable or receiving? But again, there's always that element of loss sometimes. And I love all of the, like the maps in the background, like in the Queen of Swords, even the Six of Cups, like maybe I passed it. And I just noticed that this deck was for me regarding that because, yeah, look, they're not happy either. <laughs> the Six of Cups is supposed to be the, like nostalgia and happiness, but I just love that. It just, there's some remorse that sometimes you can feel when you look back on things 
and it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to, or you missed something that happened in the past. So it's just great. So this is the Hughes Tarot. And here we have the Augenblick, I believe it's pronounced, Tarot and Companion Oracle. Here are the guidebooks and they're, they're great. They really, they really give you just enough meat of the imagery and the meaning to kind of run off with it and do your own thing. And the reason why I love these two, as I mentioned in my last video, actually these were supposed to be the end of part one, but I wanted to make sure I got the touchstone and the majestic earth in. Um, I have a feeling that the more I work with these two decks, the higher they will get on the, on the, you know, the scale or the ranking of decks that I can't live without. So let's zoom in a little bit. Here's the tarot deck and here's the oracle. I love the old style of art. And look at these backs. I love it. Um, I love landscape. There's like, there's some people in these, but it gives you the feeling. And, and here's, here's something that I wanted to mention. I had the Tildwick Tarot and I'm looking at it and this was before I developed like a deeper relationship with tarot and I sold it for like super cheap. I actually got it super cheap and I sold it for super cheap and I don't, I wish I had never done that because this is kind of like along the same veins of that. It gives you the feeling of the place of the meaning of the card, right? So in the Tildwick tarot, you've got, I don't want to talk too much about the Tildwick, but the Tildwick Tarot, you've got these like places within this abandoned home and it's so, it's so haunting. So I'd like to add as an honorary mention the Tildwick Tarot to the decks I can't live without because I do know it will be reprinted and I don't know exactly when, but it will be. I'm sorry if that was out of frame. Um, so take the reins, take control, Ace of Cups, you have this fountain now it's not currently you know putting any water out and that could be something meaningful meaningful as well but I love the guidebook I love the um, meanings I love the keywords and I'm very 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 picky when it comes to oracle decks and the keywords used normally I like them to be very simple I like them to be like matter of fact like how do I deal with this what is the energy but for whatever reason, this um, oracle definitely fits the bill as far as capturing that energy. And so does the tarot. And it gives me so much to chew on. And I guess that's kind of like what I like and what I love about these, t these decks that I can't live without is that I could spend years diving into these and I'll never scratch even the surface of the possible meaning combinations. And I love that. It's a study deck for sure, both of these. So this is the Augenblick Tarot and the Oracle by Shannon Loftus. Next up is the Devas of Creation by Scylla Conway. I know that Scylla, I believe, mentions in the guidebook that you pronounce it Dewas of Creation. I don't like that word. I'm not going to lie. I, I don't want to call it that. I, when I see a V, it's just something within me that I really, I've used the word Deva in the past, you know, in Sanskrit and, and in chanting. And that's kind of where I'm going to stay with it because that's what is comfortable for me. So the Devas of Creation is such a unique deck and it goes from the microcosm to the macrocosm. And that's what I love about it. And this is yet another intriguing, beautiful study deck that harnesses the energies of planets, of the smallest particles under a microscope. And it leaves it all there without any titles or anything. And some of them have more visible features than others. 
like you could find faces anywhere in these, like the energy of the crystal. You know, here's, there, and there's different meanings and I don't have them all memorized, but here's a person being overcome and taken by a wave. Here's like autumn, the releasing. So there's, there's just so much emotion and so much to dive into here. The guidebook really, it doesn't go into like deep, deep discussion on the different energies of these different devas. I mean, you can see like the paint strokes and the, the canvas that she did it on. And like, you could just go into the depths there. I mean, this looks, this doesn't even look like she painted it. It almost looks like an x-ray image. But I just love to consider the majesty of creation and look at this water. And to consider the universe as part of who we are here, Saturn, and is interlinked in everything and in all. So I just love this deck as well. Definitely a deep study. Definitely uh, go out there and reach these, these energies type of deck. It, it definitely asks you to go deeper into nature and into the meaning of existence completely. To look at a blade of grass and consider it cognizant and conscious in some way is pretty amazing. So this is the Davis of Creation by Silla Conway. Next up is the Angel Blessings by Kimberly Marooney. This deck is out of print, but I do believe it is or will be coming back in print, but I don't believe it will be matte cardstock. Now I love the artwork here and it goes, you know, it, it matches similarly to the um, beautiful Rebellion Tarot, but I really feel whenever I use this deck, I feel a connection to the angelic realm, I feel a connection to the divine. And the guidebook is is fantastic too. Kimberly Marooney definitely knows how to explain the um, the guidance that these angels can provide. And it's a beautiful backing. Whenever, whenever I feel alone in some way to connect with this deck, it feels like I'm drawing the energies of an, beings from another realm. So you've personified these energies into these angelic beings and it makes it more accessible to connect when they have a name. Look at this vibration. And you know, there's different types of artwork in here. So they're not all the same, you know, so it's almost like a collab deck, but it works. You know, that's a little bit different of an art style, right? I feel safe and comforted whenever I use this deck. So that is the Angel Blessings by Kimberly Mar Marooney. Here we have the Relative Tarot. Now this will be coming back in mass market form. I'm not, I believe that the Companion Oracle that is included in here will be part of it, but I'm not exactly sure. And I will link the information to that. I know, uh, Bonnie from Old Soul Mermaid recently did a video and she has a link on her. I, I will um, also link her a video to that if I can find it, hopefully, fingers crossed, um, to the publisher that will be taking on this project. But this is the indie deck and Oracle in one by Carrie Paris. Now, whenever, when I first saw this, this deck, 
the tarot, I was like, I have to have it. Have to have it. There's no way I'm not going to own this deck. It was so unique and clever. And this I had to kind of um, super glue down and now it's perfect. And it holds them beautifully. You can't really like tip the box because the cards will move up in the box and spill out. This is the Oracle and this is the Tarot. Now, she took, as she was doing the Kickstarter, to my understanding, she took um, submissions for ancestral photographs and incorporated what she in, what she wanted to into the tarot and into the oracle. I think it, I think maybe it was both. But if correct me if I'm wrong, if she only accepted submissions for the oracle or if it was both. But she was able to kind of collage style in a variety of different images that correspond with the RWS system. So here's the Empress and you, you know, you have the crown of um, stars, you have the shield here. So I thought that was just so clever. Here's the dog at the cliff. And I knew I just had to have it. And I'm, I'm so interested in these hands. They almost look like Barbie hands, but not. I don't know what it is. But yeah, this is from Art of US. You have the two glasses from Temperance. And the wings. And the way she did it was so just amazing. Like here's the, um, looks like the Queen of Cups cup in the King of Cups. So you have the wands and it's just, it's phenomenal. And I use it for ancestral readings, for past life work. So that's the tarot. And now let's take a look at the, um, the oracle. Now these keywords are a little bit more specific, precise. Like look at this humor, like look at this guy's teeth. Like I want to know the story of these people. Like he must have been hurting from lack of dentistry or dental, you know, help or dental care rather. Um, but he was still able to find humor. So leisure and they all have wings in the Oracle. And that's, that just honors their presence. Like look at the tower and the, in, in the images of the people falling and the crowd falling. You just like, you just want to like ask her a question. She's inviting you to sit down. Like, what is the story she's going to tell you? And here's a Hierophant's robe. Addiction, devil. So yeah, it's just great. Nonconformist. I mean, wow. What did people think of her then? How was she treated? We have the swords and the wrapping. So this is the relative tarot and uh, accompanying oracle. And I will leave links in the description box for more information about these decks. Last, but definitely not least of part two of decks I cannot live without is the Tarot de Ozarks Marseille. Now I wanted to definitely include a Marseille in here because I am exploring Marseille now and I'm waiting on the CBD Marseille so I can compare it to the Hodorowski deck and really get into the imagery and it's kind of like, um, like did you ever have the highlights book when you were younger? I know I'm dating myself here, but you have pick out the differences in the images and that's totally my jam. I'm going to be doing that for sure. And once I go through all of that, and it's gonna take me some time, it's gonna take me some time to study these cards, study the meanings. But once I do that and I feel more confident in explaining to you what I've learned, I will do a comparison video for sure. So this is a Marseille type. It's not um, a traditional Marseille, but as far as 
getting feeling from Marseille, this one has provided me with the most so far. Because of the coloration, because of the patterns that I can pick out, my intuition just screams with this deck. And that's what I love. I love things that come up and it feels like this could be um, like egg yolks. They could be candy. They could be plates. They could be, I mean, what does that look like to you? It could be a breast, you know, it could be women in your life. It could be motherhood. It could be so many different things. And that's what I love about it. it, it they resemble different things. And that's what Marseille is all about. They, the pips especially could be a variety of different things. But it's definitely, I didn't think I was going to like this when I first ordered it because it was so not clean. It was so messy it felt like. You know, I didn't think I was going to like it. But the more I worked with it and the more I, like, look at this color palette. If color does something for you, like, look at these white dots and the crosses inside those pentacles. They could be so many things and then paired with other things like the light could that be the beams of light coming from the hermit card this is just like off the top of my head right now but some of the cards are darker than others some of them have a burst of color let's look at her facial expression too she she knows who she is and the color is just phenomenal the, the, the green the lushness on the top and the vibrancy and the passion in the bottom it gives you so much to chew on like here's the queen of pentacles very earthy brown but connected to um, the element of air possibly depending on what other cards come up look at this turquoise the strength card the 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 watery feeling the coolness the calm that she's being able to handle this line handle her inner um, difficulties like emotions that come up the way she's able to uh, calmly respond versus react is what that card means to me so this would be the nine I mean there's something going on in the center here and what are those dots along the center line here cutting through like almost there but what are you cutting through too it's still dark on the outside is this what you need to be focusing on something inside that needs to have a little bit more time to grow and look at this four of cups you have the the water if you were to get this card next to it look at the blue and the blue or like here like splashing over into the next card depending on the positioning right and it just interconnects so well and the white here with the red in the center and the different layers and what's coming out what what, do you, what are we manifesting what is the potential here what's being trapped inside depending on the question it could be very meaningful so this is the tarot de ozarks and I don't know the creator's name, but I will either create a title or link it. So thank you for joining me for part two of Tarot Decks I Can't Live Without. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you guys soon. Bye. As always, thanks for watching. And if you found value in this video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more tarot-related content like this. Ring that bell to be notified whenever I upload new stuff. And don't forget... To listen closely to the whispers of the heathen within that already has the answer and knows the path that's right for you. Until next time, be brave, be bold, be you. Bye.